The Second Council of Ephesus was a Christological church synod in 449 AD convened by Emperor Theodosius II under the presidency of Pope Dioscorus I of Alexandria. It was intended to be an ecumenical council, and it is accepted as such by the Myophysite Orthodox but was rejected by the Chalcedonian Diophysites. It was explicitly repudiated by the Diophysites' fourth and next council, the Council of Chalcedon of 451, and it was named the Latrocinium or Robber Council by Pope Leo I. To this day, several churches that adopted the Council of Chalcedon refer to it the same, but several Orthodox churches refute that. The Council of Chalcedon gave rise to what has been called the Monophysite Schism between those who accepted the Second Council of Ephesus and those who accepted the Council of Chalcedon. Many Roman emperors over the next several hundred years attempted to reconcile the opposed parties, in the process giving rise to several other schisms and teachings later condemned as heresy, such as monoenergism and monothelitism, which were devised as attempted compromises between the Chalcedonian and non Chalcedonian parties, cf. the Henoticon and the Three Chapters the latter itself leading to another schism lasting over a century, the schism of the three chapters, both this council and that at Chalcedon dealt primarily with Christology, the study of the nature of Christ. Both councils affirmed the doctrine of the hypostatic union and upheld the orthodox Christian doctrine that Jesus Christ is both fully God and fully man. The Second Council of Ephesus decreed St. Cyril of Alexandria's formula that Christ is one one is a qualitative description of union of divinity and humanity incarnate nature myophysis, that is fully human and fully God united without separation, without confusion, without mixture and without alteration. The Council of Chalcedon decreed that in Christ two natures exist, a divine nature physis, and a human nature physis, united in one person hypostasis, with neither division nor confusion. Those who do not accept the decrees of Chalcedon nor later ecumenical councils are variously named monophysites though this term is only correctly used to describe a small minority and is most often pejoratively applied to others, myophysites, or non-Chalcedonians, and comprise what is today known as Oriental Orthodoxy, a communion of eight auto Cephalus Ecclesial Communions Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church, Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church, Syriac Orthodox Church, and Armenian Apostolic Church, the first in honor of which is the Pope of Alexandria, head of the Coptic Egyptian Orthodox Church. Those who accepted the teaching of Chalcedon but resided in areas dominated by Oriental Orthodox bishops were called by the non-Chalcedonians Melkites, or «king's men» as the emperors were usually Chalcedonians. The Antiochian Orthodox Church historically descends from these people. Shortly after the Council of Chalcedon, the Myophysite party appointed a Pope of Alexandria in opposition to the Chalcedonian Pope of Alexandria. Over the next few centuries, various popes usually held to either one side or the other although some accepting the Henoticon. Eventually, two separate papacies were established, each claiming sole legitimacy. Topic first session topic The Acts by the Second Council of Ephesus are known through a Syriac translation by a monk that was published by the British Museum Ms. Adit, 14530, and written in 535. The first session is missing. Topic. Attending signatories Topic. There was insufficient time for Western bishops to attend except a certain Julius, Bishop of Puteoli, who, together with a Roman priest, Renatus who died on the way, and the deacon Hilarius who later became Pope himself, represented Pope Leo I. The Emperor gave Dioscorus of Alexandria the presidency, ten authentian chi ta protea Greek. The legate Julius is mentioned next, but when his name was read at Chalcedon, the bishops cried, He was cast out, no one represented Leo. Next in order is Juvenal of Jerusalem, above both the Patriarch Domnus II of Antioch and Patriarch Flavian of Constantinople. There were 198 bishops present at the council, with eight representatives of absent bishops, and lastly the deacon Hilarius with his notary, Dulcidius. The question before the council, by order of the emperor, was whether Patriarch Flavian, in a synod held by him at Constantinople beginning November 8, 448 AD, had justly deposed and excommunicated Archimandrite Eutyches for refusing to admit two natures in Christ. Consequently, Flavian and six other bishops, who had been present at his synod, were not allowed to sit as judges in the council. Topic. Opening proceeding. Topic. 
The brief of convocation by Theodosius II was read. Then the legates to the Pope of the Church of Rome explained that although it would have been contrary to custom for their Pope to be present in person, the Pope of the Church of Rome had sent a letter with the legates to be read at the council. In the letter, Leo I referred to his dogmatic letter to Flavian, the Tome of Leo, which he intended the council to accept as a ruling of faith. However, the head notary declared that the emperor's letter should be read first, and Bishop Juvenal of Jerusalem commanded for the letter of the emperor to be presented. It ordered the presence at the council of the anti-Nestorian monk Barsumas. The question of faith was next on the proceedings. Pope, Patriarch of Alexandria, Dioscorus declared that it was not a matter for inquiry but that they had to consider only recent activity, as all present had acknowledged that they strictly adhered to the faith. He was acclaimed as a guardian and the champion of Oriental Orthodoxy. Eutyches was then introduced, and he declared that he held the Nicene Creed to which nothing could be added and from which nothing could be taken away. He claimed that he had been condemned by Flavian for a mere slip of the tongue even though he had declared that he held the faith of Nicaea and Ephesus, and he had appealed to the present council. His life had been put in danger and he now asked for judgment against the calumnies that had been brought against him. Eutyches, accuser, Bishop Eusebius of Dorylium, was not allowed to be heard. The bishops agreed that the acts of the condemnation of Eutyches, at the 448 Constantinople Council, should be read, but the legates of Rome asked that Leo's letter might be heard first. Eutyches interrupted with the complaint that he did not trust the legates. They had been to dine with Flavian and had received much courtesy. Pope Dioscorus decided that the acts of the trial should have precedence and so the letter of Leo I was not read. The acts were then read in full and also the account of an inquiry made on April 13, 449, into the allegation of Eutyches that the synodal acts had been incorrectly noted down and then the account of another inquiry on April 27, 449, into the accusation made by Eutyches that Flavian had drawn up the sentence against him beforehand. While the trial was being related, cries arose from those present, declaring a belief in one nature, that two natures meant Nestorianism, of burn Eusebius, and so forth. Flavian rose to complain that no opportunity was given to him to defend himself. The Acts of the Second Council of Ephesus now give a list of 114 votes in the form of short speeches absolving Eutyches. Even three of his former judges joined in that although by the emperor's order, they were not allowed to vote. Lastly, Barsumas added his voice. A petition was read from the monastery of Eutyches, which had been excommunicated by Flavian. The monks asserted that they agreed in all things with Eutyches and with the Holy Fathers, and therefore the Synod absolved them. Topic. Relations with the First Council of Ephesus Topic. An extract from the Acts of the First Session of the First Council of Ephesus 431 AD was read next. Many of the bishops and also the deacon Hilarus expressed their assent, some adding that nothing beyond that faith could be allowed. Dioscorus then spoke, declaring that it followed that Flavian and Eusebius must be deposed, as if an anathema was passed unjustly, and he who passed it was to be judged by the same. Flavian and Eusebius had previously interposed an appeal to the Roman Pope and to a synod held by him. Their formal letters of appeal have been recently published by Ameli. Topic. Response of Chalcedon Topic. The evidence given at the Ecumenical Council of Chalcedon contradicts the account in the acts of the final scene of the session. It was reported that secretaries of the bishops had been violently prevented from taking notes, and it was declared that both Barsumas and Dioscorus struck Flavian. It was further reported that many bishops threw themselves on their knees to beg Dioscorus for mercy to Flavian and also Alexandrine Parabolani, that some signed a blank paper, and that others did not sign at all, the names being afterwards filled in of all who were actually present. The papal legate Hilarius uttered a single word in Latin, contradicitor, annulling the sentence in Leo's name. He then escaped with difficulty. It was said Dioscorus had previously gathered 1,000 monks, telling them to wait outside the church during the council and to come when he called them. When Dioscorus began to read the sentence of condemnation against Flavian and Eusebius, some bishops went up to Dioscorus, asking him not to. Dioscorus called the guards, and the 1,000 monks who were waiting outside with some soldiers came in and charged at Flavian and his followers. 
Flavian ran to the altar and grabbed hold of it for his life. The soldiers and monks forcefully took him from the altar beating him, kicking him and then whipping him. Flavian was deported into exile and died from his wounds a few days later in Lydia. His body was buried in obscurity. It was not until Flavius Marcianus called the Council of Chalcedon that Flavian's body was buried with honor in Constantinople. No more of the acts were read at Chalcedon. However, Theodoret, Evagrius and others note that the council voted to depose Theodoret himself, Domnus, and Ibas, Bishop of Edessa, Mesopotamia. Topic. Subsequent sessions Topic. Topic. Attitude of schism Topic. The Syriac Acts take up the history where the Chalcedonian Acts break off. Of the first session, only the formal documents, letters of the emperor, petitions of Eutyches, are known to be preserved in Syriac though not within the same manuscript. It is evident that the non-Chalcedonian editor disapproved of the first session and purposely omitted it, not because of the high-handed proceedings of Dioscorus but because the later Myophysites generally condemned Eutyches as a heretic and did not wish to remember his rehabilitation by a council that they considered to be ecumenical but the rest of Christianity scorned. <laughs> Attendance in the next session, according to the Syriac Acts, 113 people were present, including Barsumas. Nine new names appeared. The legates did not appear and were sent for, but only the notary Dulcitius could be found and he was unwell. It was an uncanonical charge against St. Dioscorus at the Council of Chalcedon that he had held an ecumenical council without the Roman see, which was never allowed. That manifestly refers to his having continued at the council after the departure of the legates. Topic. Double jeopardy Topic. The first case was that of Ibas, Bishop of Edessa. The famous champion of the Antiochian party, he had been accused of crimes before by Domnus, Bishop of Antioch, and had been acquitted soon after Easter 448. His accusers had gone to Constantinople and been granted a new trial by the emperor. Bishops Photius of Tyre, Eustathius of Baratus and Uranius of Imeria were to examine the matter. The bishops met at Tyre, removed to Baratus and returned to Tyre. Eventually, in February 449, they acquitted Ibas once more, together with his fellow accused, Daniel, Bishop of Haran and John of Theodosianopolis. Cheroias, governor of Osirhain L, was then ordered to go to Edessa to start a new inquiry. He was received by the people of Edessa on April 12, 449, with shouts in honor of the emperor, the governor and the late bishop Rabula and against Nestorius and Ibas. The detailed summary of the reception takes up some two or three pages of the report that Cheroias sent, along with two letters of his own, to Constantinople. The report gave details of the accusations against Ibas, and led to the emperor's ordering for a new bishop to be chosen. The report, which provided a history of the whole affair, was read at length by the order of Dioscorus. When the famous letter of Ibas to Bishop Maris was read, cries arose such as, These things pollute our ears. Cyril is immortal. Let Ibas be burnt in the midst of the city of Antioch. Exile is of no use. Nestorius and Ibas should be burnt together. A final indictment was made in a speech by a priest of Edessa named Eulogius. Sentence was finally given against Ibas of deposition and excommunication, without any suggestion that he ought to be called to speak in his own defense. In the next case, that of Ibas' nephew, Daniel of Haran, it was declared that they had clearly seen his guilt at Tyre and had acquitted him only because of his voluntary resignation. He was quickly deposed by the agreement of all the council. He, too, was not present and could not defend himself. Next was the turn of Irenaeus, who, as an influential layman at the First Council of Ephesus, had been known to favor Nestorius. He had later become Bishop of Tyre, but the Emperor had deposed him in 448 under charges of bigamy and blasphemy, and Photius had succeeded him. The Synod ratified the deposition of Irenaeus. Aquilinus, Bishop of Byblus, had been consecrated by Irenaeus and was his friend. He was the next to be deposed. 
Sophronius, bishop of Tella, was a cousin of Iba's. He was, therefore, accused of magic, and his case was reserved for the judgment of the new bishop of Edessa, a surprisingly mild decision. Topic. Condemnation of Theodoret Topic. Theodoret, an opponent of Dioscorus and a personal supporter of Nestorius, had been confined within his own diocese by the emperor in the preceding year to prevent him from preaching at Antioch. Theodoret had been a friend of Nestorius, and for more than three years 431 AD, he was a prominent antagonist of Cyril of Alexandria. However, despite the fact the two great theologians had come to terms and had celebrated their agreement, Theodoret was rejected with scorn. Theodosius had twice written to prevent him dot from coming to the council at Ephesus, and the council found a reason to depose him in his absence. A monk from Antioch produced a volume of extracts from the works of Theodoret. First was read Theodoret's letter to the monks of the East see Mansi, v. 1023, then some extracts from a lost apology for Diodorus and Theodore. The very name of the work was sufficient, in the view of the council, to condemn Theodoret and Dioscorus pronounced the sentence of deposition and excommunication. When Theodoret, in his remote diocese, heard of the sentence pronounced in his absence, he at once appealed to Leo in a letter e. P. C. X. I. 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 He also wrote to the legate Renatus e. P. C. X. V. I., being unaware that he was dead. Topic. Condemnation of Domnus. Topic. The council had a yet bolder task before it. Domnus of Antioch is said to have agreed in the first session to the acquittal of Eutyches, but he refused, on the plea of sickness, to appear at the later sessions of the council. He seems to have been disgusted or terrified or both at the leadership of Pope Dioscorus. The council had sent him an account of their actions, and he replied, according to the Acts, that he agreed to all the sentences that had been given and regretted that his health made his attendance impossible. Immediately after receiving this message, the council proceeded to hear a number of petitions from monks and priests against Domnus. Domnus was accused of friendship with Theodoret and Flavian, of Nestorianism, of altering the form of the sacrament of baptism, of intruding an immoral bishop into a messa, of having been uncanonically appointed himself and of being an enemy of Dioscorus. Several pages of the manuscripts are missing, but it does not seem that the patriarch was asked to appear or given a chance to defend himself. The bishops shouted that he was worse than Iba's. He was deposed by a vote of the council, and with that final act, the acts come to an end. Reception The council wrote the customary letter to the emperor see Perry, trans, p. 431, who confirmed with another letter Mancy, 7, 495, and Perry, p. 364. Dioscorus sent an encyclical to the bishops of the East, with a form of adhesion to the council that they were to sign Perry, p. 375. He also went to Constantinople and appointed his secretary Anatolius as bishop of that see. Juvenal of Jerusalem was loyal to Dioscorus. He had deposed the patriarchs of Antioch and Constantinople, but one powerful adversary yet remained. He halted at Nicaea and with ten bishops probably the same ten Egyptian metropolitans whom he had brought to Ephesus. In addition to all his other crimes he extended his madness against him who had been entrusted with the guardianship of the vine by the Saviour. In the words of the bishops at Chalcedon, and excommunicated the Pope himself. Meanwhile, Leo I had received the appeals of Theodoret and Flavian of whose death he was unaware and had written to them and to the emperor and empress, informing them that all of the acts of the council were nullified. He eventually excommunicated all who had taken part in it and absolved all whom it had condemned including Theodoret, with the exception of Domnus of Antioch, who seems to have had no wish to resume his see and retired into the monastic life that he had left many years earlier with regret. References Topic. Source Sedward Walford, Translator, The Ecclesiastical History of Evagrius, A History of the Church from A.D. 431 to A.D. 594, 1846. Reprinted 2008. Evolution Publishing, ISBN 978-1-889758-88-6.
This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Article Name Needed. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Topic. External links Topic. Catholic Encyclopedia. Robber Council of Ephesus. At New Advent. Robber Synod. In the 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica.